All right, so there is a paradox at the heart of the atheist community, and it has been here for over 10 years. The paradox is this. A huge chunk of the atheist community, 30% I would say roughly, are here, I call them the debate me bro clowns, are here because they are intellectual bullies. That's why they showed up. They don't care about the arguments for God. They don't really care what's true. They are here to show somebody how smart they are. They watched Christopher Hitchens wreck somebody. They watched Matt Dillahunty wreck somebody. And that's why they're here. They want to wreck somebody intellectually. Can't wait to show how smart I am. But here's the paradox. They're dumb. Did I stutter? No. That is a huge part of the culture of the atheist community. And they are a bad look for your entire community, guys, and they're dragging you down to some degree. They are dumb as we speak. The only reason why they were successful is they found dumber. <laughs> I swear to God, that's true. I told you, yeah, my wife calls me my friend for Pasadena Dumb and Dumber. I find, that, I find that highly amusing myself. The only reason they have been successful thus far is they found dumber. They are dumb, they found dumber. The Noah's are Christians. Sorry, guys, dumber. I'm not, no disrespect intended, dumber. It's just intellectual stuff. <laughs> I'm not trying to insult you. It sounds like an insult, Craig. It's not really an insult, trust me. Go look at the past. When I was watching atheist videos five, six, seven years ago and thought, well, this would be kind of interesting, okay, there were two apologists that they were constantly <laughs> locking horns with. Venom X, and I think his name is Joshua Furstein. Go look. <laughs> I swear to God, Joshua Firstine. I don't know. He's, you see the things of him. He's all these crazy, like, I can prove evolution is false just by like this coffee cup. So all this crazy stuff. No offense, Venomax or Josh Firstine, but you weren't helping. <laughs> please, please leave the apologetics to uh, dry apologists and myself and John Buck and people like that. Why? Because you weren't helping. <laughs> you know, you weren't helping at all. They were dumb. They found dumber. That's the only reason it survived. Why? Because they're a pack of idiots. They're a pack of idiots to a man. They're bullying people on Twitter as we speak. They are dumb. They found dumber. Sign, sign, signs. And they don't understand signs. At the end of the day, within two or three years, that is the paradox right at the heart, smack, right smack dab in the middle of the atheist community. Huge chunk of them, 30% of them are dumb. And they're paradoxically intellectual bullies. That's why I have no problem calling them dumb. Because they're dumb. Period. Incapable of nuanced thought. Dumb. Equals dumb. At the end of the day, the only people left standing, I've said this before, I promise you this is true. It is not negotiable. Why? Because there aren't that many Noah's Ark Christians to kick around anymore. They're going to come up against hardcore reality. But they're outgunned. <laughs> They're outgunned, not just by Christians. Go watch the smart Muslims. Uh, yeah, the Muslims. Go watch the Muslims. I forget what the channel is. The ones who basically walked Aaron Ra. Go watch Steve McRae's analysis. This is kind of a must-watch. Steve McRae does an analysis of, uh, I forget what they call their channel. They're, they're three or four really well-versed well in philosophy Muslims. They converted a guy. Bomb went off in the atheist community. Why? Because they converted a guy to Islam through argumentation, through the quality of their arguments and their argumentation alone. They are well grounded in philosophy. They basically took Aaron Ra and walked him right up to the doorstep of, you know, necessary being. And then he went, wait, 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 wait. It's a really interesting case study and how to present an argument correctly. These guys know their stuff. They aren't dumb either. At the end of the day, the only people left standing are going to be the philosophical atheists. You can still not believe in God. Someone, the paradigm, paradigmatic example is somebody like Ben Watkins or Jeffrey Williams. Ben Watkins' is intention with the atheist community, as we speak, I've mentioned this in other videos, why they're basically saying they're being dumb like us. <laughs> Stop using nuanced thought, Ben. Why? Because we're idiots and we don't like it. <laughs> it confuses us. Some of them aren't dumb. They are just not using nuanced thought, which brings us to there's going to be a mass conversion of, you know, top shelf atheists to philosophical atheists. My money on who converts first, just a guess, you know, take it with a grain of salt, we're just having fun, we're just chatting, we're having fun. 
gone too far this time, Craig. I oh, haven't, haven't gone anywhere yet. Relax. <laughs> this time you're really going too far, Craig. Everyone, calm down. Deep breaths. They're, the the top shelf atheists are going to convert to philosophical atheists. I see no other option for them. Why they are capable of nuanced thought. I have my my star ponies, my my best case scenario, my best guess on who will be the first one to convert fully. Shannon Q and or Apologia. Simple logic. Shannon, because she's the smartest. She's the smartest person in the atheist. She may be the smartest person in the atheist community. That's why I think she was. She already does it sometimes. She already does it sometimes. She had Joe Schmidt, as I pointed out. She had Joe Schmidt on her channel. She gets pushed back probably why she hasn't gone full philosophical atheist. She gets pushed back. Why? From her own community. Stop it, Shannon. Be dumb like us. <laughs> Stop using nuanced thought, Shannon. Why? We don't like it. <laughs> Religion is dumb, Shannon. Please say that religion is dumb and bad, please. If you think religion is dumb, you're dumb or dishonest. Why? You're not using nuanced thought. Apologia because it has the most integrity. I know Christians don't cry. Christians are freaking out right now. M the most integrity. I've said this before, I will say it again. And I won't say it that much more. When, if the church, think of it this way, okay? It actually cost him something to deconstruct. I promise. He counted the cost before he did it. He knew that he was going to lose friends and family. Deconstructed anyways. Why? Because he knew that some of the stuff that he was learning was true compared to fundamentalist Christianity. F hear this clearly. If you're a Christian, this is good insight into atheists. If they were former fundamentalists, be more understanding first. And if you're an atheist and you are a former fundamentalist, this truth is true irrespective. Hear it clearly, though, please. This is nuanced. Okay, if the choice is binary between the type of fundamentalist, rigid, ideological Christianity that a lot of these people were raised in and atheism, atheism is the more honest position between those two poles. If the choice is binary, the choice isn't binary. Once they start to understand that, things are going to shift dramatically. The choice isn't binary. It's not atheism and or fundamentalist Christianity. There's a whole galaxy of worlds in between. Nuanced positions. If you are an atheist, okay, how should you be reading the Bible? As I've already said, as according to Schopenhauer, sensu allegorical. As allegory. How much? The whole thing. You don't believe any of it's true. Correct? Right. Okay, you should be reading it all as allegory. All of it. Non-negotiable. Why? That's the nuanced take. That's the honest position if you don't follow the faith. That's what I did. Did I stutter? Nope. That's what I did when I was exploring Tao Te Ching and when I was exploring Hinduism. I read the Bhagavad Gita. And I read the Tao Te Ching. Did I go, if I find an error in this, I'll put it down? It's all false? No, that's fundamentalism. That's stupid way of interacting with complex stuff. That's how Aaron Ra talks to this day. Aaron Ra's take on religion is dumb and or dishonest. It's a little bit of both. Why you let him get away with it is because it's, it's you know, it's mana for idiots. Yay, religion is dumb. Philosophy is so stupid. It was put into place by the four horsemen to some degree. Those guys are on their way out the door. Why? Because they're not going to stand the test of time. They don't have enough intellectual credibility and or standing. I promise. Dawkins is already coming under fire for his behavior. I don't know. He's saying, like, I guess, I don't know. He's under some fire for his behavior. And as I've already pointed out, Sam Harris, you know, Bernardo Castro is mad at Sam Harris for misrepresenting idealism and spoiling for a fight. Should that intellectual, should that, that, that clash take place, you know, Sam Harris will, will, won't be put maybe seven points on the board against Bernardo Castro. And as I've already pointed out, if Matt Dill Dillahunty were to debate Bernardo Castro, he would not be able to put a single point on the board against him. I am not dissing Matt Dillahunty. To some degrees, I think he is intellectually brilliant. But he has been wasting his time for 10 years. Why? Most of the stuff talked about in the atheist experience is an utter waste of time. Why? It's not relevant. Take it, flush it down the toilet. Maybe that's overstating, that's overstating it a little. God, fine. Don't flush it down the toilet. It's irrelevant. 
Most of it is irrelevant. The real conversation going on right now is idealism versus materialism. Materialism fails, period. End of discussion. It failed a hundred years ago. As I've said, and I'll repeat this enough till everybody clearly understands, it's not negotiable, guys. You can debate me, bro, you will lose. Why? Because it's not negotiable. It's just fact. The physics don't lie. Remember I said that. I will say that again. The physics don't lie. The physics don't lie. Again, to repeat what I said earlier, the paradox at the heart of the atheist community is that there are a whole bunch of people here to just to be intellectual bullies. And they're dumb. 30% of the atheist community is here just bullying people as we speak intellectually. The only reason they're successful is they found dumber the Noah's Ark Christians. Dumber. Aaron Ra's take on religion is dumb. Period. And dishonest. A little bit of both. But it's dumb. That's the important part. Why? Do you want to be the slowpokes? Yes or no? The greatest physicist alive today said that these guys are anti-philosophy too, guys. So is Dawkins. Those guys were anti-philosophy too. They're empiricism, they're scientism, two tent poles to most of the atheist community today, both of which are utterly false. Scientism and materialism. Materialism was debunked a hundred years ago today by what? By the physics, by the science. Promise. I promise that's true. The hard problem of consciousness is a challenge to materialism. The measurement problem in physics annihilated it a hundred years ago today. Materialism was defended by none other than Einstein himself, the greatest scientist probably of all time. And he, he, there's a series of debates between him and Niels Bohr, and eventually he gave up. Why? Because he couldn't defend it. He <laughs> couldn't defend it. Because to some degree, and this is a fact that physics don't lie, the only thing we are trying to figure out, we are trying to ascertain, and as I've said, the philosophical atheist is going to be the only one standing. They are more like me than they are like debate me bro clowns. I, did, I, did I mention the names? Ben Watkins, Jeffrey Williams. Those are philosophical atheists. Not only they're capable of nuanced thought, they use nuanced thought all the time. Jeffrey Williams is talking on all five cylinders, and I am talking on all five cylinders. The things we are saying are relatively indistinguishable from each other. Why? The facts are the same. The physics don't lie. The facts are the same, and the physics don't lie. The mistake that almost every other apologist has been making, and I said mistake, is that they start out God exists, and then they try to massage the facts to, put the, to fit the foregone conclusion. That's a mistake. Ironically, a huge chunk of the atheists are making the same mistake. God does not exist. Let me massage the facts to fit the foregone conclusion. The truth is in between. The truth is in between. God neither exists nor does not exist. <laughs> no, that's a little too bad. The truth is in between when it comes to materialism. The real world is both there and not there. The real world both is and isn't there. Bang. According to the physics, the physics don't lie. Now, as far as religion being dumb, Schrodinger himself, one of the top ten physicists of the last, of all time maybe, of the Schrodinger equation, study, as I've said, drum roll please. <laughs> That's not a drum roll. How do you make a drum roll? How do you make a drum roll please? Uh, never mind the drum roll. <laughs> Um, study, drum roll please, Vedanta, Hinduism, a religion. <laughs> I swear to God that's true. A religion. Religion's still dumb, huh? Philosophy's dumb too. The greatest physicist alive today said, quote, we need philosophy. Why? To make sense of the data. To understand the facts. Why? Because they don't make any sense. Welcome to quantum mechanics. They make no sense. What did I just say? The paradox at the heart of quantum mechanics. That's the paradox at the heart of quantum mechanics. And the physics don't lie. The real world, to some degree, both is and isn't there. What's that got to do with religion that was intuited 2,000 years ago by a group of religious called the Vedanta Hindus? Promise. Promise. Schrodinger studied Vedanta Hinduism. That's not a coincidence. And Ron is the only one who picked up. He's probably the only one who watched 
I posted that, that, that video that I posted and tagged you guys to is really good and it's easy to understand. The one that Jeffrey posted in response, I don't understand yet. I, I don't get it yet, Jeff. I really honestly don't. <laughs> it's, I, I, I don't get the whole causal, outside of the chain of causality thing. I, I'm trying to figure it out, but so far I can't make sense of it. If you're not struggling to understand this stuff, you aren't doing it right, period. If you're not struggling to understand this stuff, you aren't doing it right, period. There's no room at the table for debate me bro clowns. Why? Because it's hard to understand. Humility is essential. When I say Matt Dillahunty would, could not put a point on the board against Bernardo Castro, I'm telling you God's honest truth. Neither could I. I wouldn't try. I don't think Matt Dillahunty will either, but I wouldn't try. If I, if I ever get him on my channel, I'm just going to ask him a question, try to understand his position. Why? I don't have the standing to challenge him. He's too high up the food chain. He's got this mapped up too well. He's a hundred times more credible and, and, and intelligent than I am. I would just be asking him questions. I'd do exactly what Myth Vision did. Ask questions. Try to understand. Do the exact same thing. Myth Vision does it correctly. Said, so, hey, this is outside of my pay grade. I'm just going to try and understand. The only thing he did wrong is once he introduced the Pine Creek dub type imbecile question. <laughs> and Bernardo Castro chuckled and called him on it. Uh, uh, one of these weird from Pine Creek dub crazy land questions. I have an envelope in my hand. <laughs> it's from God. It says, I don't exist. How's this going to affect your apologetics tomorrow? It's something like that. I swear to God, he asks weird questions like that. I swear to God, it does. Here's a letter. It's from God. It says, I don't exist. I wasn't there for when you were praying. How's this going to affect how you, how you do apologetics moving forward? Crazy stuff. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> it's really funny to think about. No, no, it's, it is. It really is. If you watch his questions, that's a really good, a really good satirical version of one of his type of questions. They're crazy making questions. They, 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 they have the conclusion buried in the question. There's no other out but the question itself. The, the paradigmatic one is the dropping of the pen on the table. Which, which you believe more, that the pen will hit the table or that, you know, Jesus, whatever. That's a defeater for every non-material thing you've ever believed. Which you believe more, the pen will hit the table or evolution is true? Pen hits the table. Why? Because that's a, that's a fact that you can see right in front of you. Anyways, didn't mean to sidetrack on that. Uh, what was I talking about? What was I talking about? What was I talking about? Okay, so the dominant strain, the consensus opinion in quantum mechanics. Bump it up the food chain for just a minute. The consensus opinion in quantum mechanics will be, I promise, within five years, Relational quantum mechanics. Why? Because it is the only one that is balanced in between realism and anti-realism in equal proportions. The real world both is and isn't there. That's the paradox at the heart of quantum mechanics. That's a fact. The physics don't lie. That's a fact. The physics don't lie. Materialism and idealism are paradoxically both true. To what degree and in what proportions is the only question we are asking. The perceiver is there. Consciousness itself can be the ontological primitive. There's no contradiction there. Materialism cannot be. Why? Because you have to account for the perceiver somehow. The second you start trying to account for the conscious agent according to the physics themselves, it becomes well nigh impossible. The reason why I think that I'm almost positive relational quantum mechanics will be the dominant, the consensus opinion within five years. First of all, Carlo Rovelli is the greatest physicist alive today. That's a fact. Penrose is probably just as good. <laughs> if I could understand a word he's saying, I tell you, go listen to Penrose too, but I so far can't understand a word he's saying. I swear to God, I listen to his life, I have no idea what he's talking about. None. <laughs> I don't do what he's talking about. So I do what the atheists do. It's word salad. <laughs> it's gibberish. It's word salad. This guy's so dumb, he thinks that, but, oh, he thinks that makes sense. Ha <laughs> ha, it's word salad. Jokes on him. That's what the atheists are doing. I swear to God, that's what they're doing. I swear to God, that's what they're doing. They're interpreting religion like imbeciles and then saying religion is dumb. That's what they're freaking doing, I promise. The smart set have always considered religion intelligent. The smart set have always gravitated towards philosophy and theology. And even just as interesting topics of conversation. I know this for a fact. <laughs> I always hung out with the smart guys, for the most part. Most of my friends that I grew up with went to, to Ivy League schools. Some of them are like pointy heads who write books and, you know, teach philosophy. One of my best friends, won't get too specific, why, because you figure out who I'm talking about. <laughs> figure out exactly who I'm talking about. 
I don't know, he's not that well known yet, but he goes on some of these... There's that YouTube channel where these, I forget what it's called, Bread of, Bread of Life or something. No, that's, that's Rebecca. Is that, not Rebecca, is that you? Or are you listening? She's probably not listening. Listen to my videos. <laughs> um, 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 I forget what it's called. But he was on there a couple times. You can't understand what these guys are talking about. <laughs> it's, it's words out. <laughs> it's words out, I tell you. Penrose is a problem. He's a legend in physics, and I'm sure that he's saying the truth to some degree. I just can't sign off on it. Why? Because I can't understand a word out of his mouth. I can't understand anything he's saying. Sometimes I struggle to understand Carlo Rovelli. Most of the times I don't. Why? He's capable of talking at our level, dumbing it down enough so that, you know, I can understand it. So, I can tell you the basic gist of the matter. What is going to be discussed and how it's going to break down. Why? Because I have a pretty good grasp on that. Relational school quantum mechanics will be the dominant strain within five years. Why? Because it accounts for the fact that the real world is, it accounts for realism and anti-realism in equal proportions. The one thing that he said out of his own mouth that he tried to do on purpose was process idealism out of the equation. Get rid of idealism altogether. Why? He's uncomfortable with it. As scientists usually are, they have a bias in favor of materialism almost always. Why? Because that's what they are steeped in morning, noon, and night. Even he does. He openly acknowledges he tried to process the idealism out of it. The, 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 the quantum mechanics either lean towards idealism, the interpretations either lean towards idealism or lean towards materialism. Because the real world both is and isn't there, as far as I can tell, in equal proportions. Perspectival is going to be the key word. Key word. So there's example qubit interpretation of quantum mechanics. Don't know that much about it, I just know that it's heavily dependent. When I say idealism, I do not mean that the conscious agent, you the conscious person, are creating the reality in front of you in any way, shape, or form. So don't, don't fall into that. I'm not saying that the real world isn't there. I'm saying it is, it is and isn't there in proportions that are hard to understand. Period. That's what the physics say and the physics don't lie. He has processed idealism out of relational quantum mechanics. That's the only thing he's going to probably have to tweak. He's going to have to put idealism back in. To some, somehow. Why? Because the perspective of the conscious agent is really hard to get rid of. As I said, consciousness itself can be the ontological primitive. Materialism cannot be. Why? Because you can't account for the conscious agent. They knew that a hundred years ago. A hundred years ago, they knew that. At the dawn of the quantum era, the reason why scientists didn't accept that is because they are attached ideologically to materialism to this day. And I've explained this. Okay, going back to Cartesian dualism, that's the first time where you have mind-matter separation. And it allowed the materialists to just study the mechanics of stuff. And the, extra, the explanatory power of materialism is off the charts. Now, the heuristic I use, Jeffrey's complained about, um, I think I borrowed it from Bernardo Castro. I'm open to using another one, you know, give me a better one that's more precise and I'll use it. But it's the one I'll use for now. So, it's got to line up with three key categories. Parsimonious, that's probably what Jeffrey's objecting to because he thinks reality is chaotic. Fair enough. Parsimonious, logically consistent, and explanatory power. Materialism, in terms of explanatory power, was off the charts. It was the entire foundation of the scientific revolution. Because once you start just stripping away stuff and empirically verifying for how stuff operates, heating it up, seeing what happens, writing down the results. So you heat up water, now you have steam. The steam rises and you go, hey, wait a minute, that steam is in motion. I bet you you could use that motion to power an engine. Now you have a steam-powered steam locomotive. Voila! the Industrial Revolution, voila, most of science, up until quantum mechanics. <laughs> they were starting that, the, the fissures were there before quantum mechanics. They really were. They really were. The contradictions of materialism were starting to show long before quantum mechanics showed up. Quantum mechanics just proved what had already been intuited. And intuited by philosophers a hundred years prior to quantum mechanics. Again, the key philosophers here, the German idealists Kant and Schopenhauer, of the two, I think Schopenhauer is the more helpful. So, uh, getting back to the issue at hand. 
We are re-representing reality back to ourselves. That's what we are perceiving. We are perceiving to some degree inaccurately. That's a fact. That's a fact. Look at the table in front of you as I've tried to already explain. You see it as solid matter. Reality check, it isn't. It's electrons in motion at the atomic or subatomic level. You can't represent it back to yourself as anything other than solid matter. But that is a convenient fiction. That's not what it is. It is particles in motion. You don't see it as that. There's a lot of these discrepancies. A lot of these discrepancies going on in your perspective of things. Going back to Kant, the phenomena, the, the phenomena, noumena distinction. There's phenomena, how we experience things and what they are actually in themselves. And there's a discrepancy between how things actually are, the quote unquote real material world, and how we perceive and experience it. That discrepancy is important. Ultimately, what we are trying to resolve, and there's only going to be one set of right answers for the most part. Physics don't lie. There's going to be the facts, and the facts alone. That's why I don't think we need to... Uh, let's see if I'm ram rambling a lot, Craig. <laughs> Calm down. Uh, yeah, rambling on 26 minutes. Okay, I'll try to wrap it up. Um, the long and the short of it. I do not think we as apologists should start out God exists and then massage the facts to put, fit the data. It's not necessary. The tent pole of most atheists has been annihilated. They just don't know it yet. Materialism is false. It was proven false a hundred years ago by quantum mechanics. Einstein himself tried to defend it. Couldn't. Yield it. Couldn't. Einstein himself tried to defend it because to some degree the real material world exists relationally, in relationship to the conscious observer. Period. End of discussion. You can't eliminate the, conscious, the consciousness from the equations. Why? Because we there. We here. <laughs> We're perceiving. There is no contradiction with consciousness itself being the ontological primitive. You are hearing me right now. Your consciousness is there, active and engaged. There's no contradiction. Now, idealism is to some degree true. But it needs to be reconciled to the fact that the real material world does exist to some degree, just not as we actually perceive it. We are perceiving it differently than it in fact is. People have, Kant, knew, Kant told us that a hundred years ago, 200 years ago at this point. He was right. There is what is actually going on according to the facts and the science and the physics, and then there's how we perceive it. And there are thousands of discrepancies. Thousands of discrepancies. So, relational school of quantum mechanics, to summarize it all, this can't really be summarized yet, but at some point, I will tie this all up in a pretty little package and put it back in the realm of understandable Christianity somehow. <laughs> How does this relate to Christianity, Greg? Uh, somehow. Just trust me. <laughs> Just have faith. <laughs> How does this doesn't sound like Christianity, Greg? Are you an atheist? Somebody asked me that. I consider that a compliment if somebody asks me that I'm an atheist. Why? I should technically be indistinguishable from an atheist. Why? I'm trying to speak their language and talk their talk and walk their walk. I'm better at it than most of them. <laughs> Why? Because I'm actually looking at the science and telling you what it says. And I'm trying on purpose to take the metaphysical speculations out of the equation. Why? I don't think we need to do that. But the facts speak for themselves. The conversation we are having is already in Christian theist friendly territory. How do I know that for a fact? Because I'm a Christian. You are all listening to my video. <laughs> I tell you who the smart atheists are. Jeffrey Williams and Ben Watkins. Say, be more like them. Why? Because they're nuanced, complex thinkers. It's the only game in town. And did I already predict Shannon will be the first to one to become a full-blown philosophical atheist? Why? I have just a guess because she's the smartest. As far as I can tell, she's the smartest. Or Dillahunt. Dillahunt or her, but I don't know. It's hard to say. Maybe I like her more than Dillahunt. <laughs> She's nicer than Dillahunt. I like her more than Dillahunt. Dillahunt, Dillahunt he likes more than Dillahunt. That's a given. He, he does. She's nicer than me. He, he probably, probably the first person to say that. She's nicer than him. So maybe I just favor her, but I think she's, she's, she's already tried to be a nuanced think, thinker and got pushed back from the idiots in her squad. There, as I said, there are cool people on her, who are listening to her videos, there are cool people in the atheist community, I promise, I know them. Okay, I understand that. But there are a whole pack of idiots there. And those idiots are probably telling her 
You know, they probably when she had Joe Schmidt on the channel, they probably gave her pushback. So they thought he was a Christian. <laughs> I swear to God, that's true. They thought he was a Christian. Why? Because he's capable of nuanced thought, and he's capable of steel man and Christianity, and he's capable of understanding all the God models and all the philosophical arguments from the point of view of, you know, these are the strengths of them. Whenever somebody starts using nuanced thought, the Dumbo atheists get mad. Why? Either either incapable of doing it or they don't want to. They're either dumb or dishonest. Take your pick. Aaron Ra is the most paradigmatic example of him. He's either being dumb or dishonest. Religion is not dumb. If you think it's dumb, you're dumb or dishonest. Take your pick. Again, proof, case in point. 2,000 years before the physicists, the physicists, the pointiest heady, the pointiest heads of the pointy-headed scientists, the most bespectacled eggheads on the table, the smartest of the smart set, 2,000 years prior to Schrodinger, the Vedanta Hindus were telling you the same thing. Were they dumb? No. Extremely intelligent. Extremely intelligent stuff. They either intuited it through their prayers and their chants and their rituals, or they... Just smart. <laughs> just smart. <laughs> he studied with that into a fact. Go look it up. Go look it up. That's a fact. Religion isn't dumb. Period. It's extraordinarily complex. If you're handling it like a Dumbo, there's a good chance you're dumb. It's extraordinarily complex. If you think it's the, the, the dialogue between the, the former fundamentalist Christians and the fundamentalist Christians is most of what dominates the space. Okay, that's an irrelevant dialogue. You deconstruct it from Christianity, get over it. They're wrong about a lot of stuff. I understand that. They're wrong about a lot of stuff, Craig. I understand that. Get over it. It's not relevant. It's not relevant. It's really not. They're wrong about a lot of stuff, though, Craig. I understand that. But they're dominating in society. No, they're not. Not a real planet Earth. They're not. I grew up in New York, New York, guys. In 1980, 1990s. I did not know a fundamentalist Christian until I was 20 years old. Why? They aren't there. Why is that important? Because what they're talking about, the media elites, they're the media elites who run the media, that's the truth. That's where I grew up. They're telling you the truth. There was no such thing as a fundamentalist Christian in the town I grew up in. None. Zero. There were still people who were nominally Christian or nominally religious. Most of my friends were secular Jews. There was no such thing as a fundamentalist Christian. Didn't know until I was 20 years old. They're not this huge dominant boogeyman force that runs the nation. They're a power base within the Republican Party to some degree, and they used to be a power base within the Democratic Party. But there are all different types of Christians out there. You know, there's even Christians that atheists love, like God is gray or whatever. So, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What are you talking about this for? I don't know. I have to change the subject. Right? Yeah, okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Just, just, I don't know. Just started giggling. Struck me as funny. I don't know why. I don't know why. <laughs> so now you don't understand how what my mind puts up with all the time. Um, so, anyways, that was all for now. Uh, yeah, I'm rambling a little, but there's a couple really good, interesting, solid points. At least interesting points. If not quite at least interesting. <laughs> it was at least an interesting video if it wasn't quite coherent. <laughs> How about that? Is that, is that fair enough? Okay, fair enough. It's interesting stuff. It's all over the place, but it's pretty interesting. <laughs> it's a new take. Let's put it that way. Yeah, really new take. It's original. I'll give them that. <laughs> so, there you have it, kids. That is all for now. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Amen.